What's going on YouTube? This video will be heavy, heavy spoilers ahead, obviously. We're going to kind of talk about and have a discussion about Alien Covenant since I've let it sit for a little while, and I've had more time to think about it and process a little bit more. So let's get going. The beginning was a bit disjointed and uh, kind of slow. Like you're kind of feeling like, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? And the characters, I think it had more to do with the characters and more of the stuff leading up to them before they even get to the planet. Before getting the transmission, you're kind of sitting there thinking, okay, this is kind of fucking boring. This is, <laughs> nothing's happening. I'm not getting into any of the characters. I don't even know who I'm supposed to be kind of following here. The movie kind of gets its footing in the second and third act. It's it's very uh, like I said, it's choppy at the beginning, but it does it does lead up to that, and you does you do see a little bit more uh, of what you want to see in an alien movie. It's a little bit more entertaining, and you get a little bit more invested in it. But I will say with that, once they get to the planet, I didn't like the idea of David being this. I, I like the idea of him being like a god character, but he was very vague the way he acted. So it's like, why wouldn't they start thinking, okay, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Why is he walking around with long hair with a big trench coat, robe, and not giving any answers or explaining much. But later on, you do get a lot of explanation from him, so I guess that's a pass. It's just a little gripe that I have uh, for when they first come in contact with David. Now, what I really wanted to get out of this movie, too, is uh, the vases. I wanted the vases to be more explained, and I remember everybody thinking, okay, why, why is the black goo acting like that if it's never uh, acted like that before? It's turned the uh, engineers or engineer-like uh, beings into just dust, basically. And David actually gives the explanation saying it reacts with different plant life, with different atmosphere, and it reacts in a different way. And actually, in Prometheus, it did the same thing to that engineer at the beginning of the movie. It kind of turned him in, uh, into basic DNA and broke his uh, DNA gene down. So I'm thinking the same thing actually happens here. So that, that was actually good. I like the fact they explained that a little bit more, and I actually could understand that a little bit more. I just wanted a little bit more out of it, but I'm fine with what we got. Okay, now I want to get into David and Walter's relationship as synthetics and uh, how they interact with one another. I actually really did like this. I was really hoping to see a very dividing line in between the two, and you actually did. I, I like the way that was handled. See, David's model, he was, he was made to actually be able to create, but he actually put people off. That's what Walter was talking about. Walter was sitting there having a conversation with him, telling him that... Uh, you frighten people. And then David's over here saying, nonsense, brother. We're meant to create. You can do this. You can do that. You're trying to tell him that he could branch out from what he's used to and his used to programming because David has all this freedom and uh, he's thinking that Walter is, you know, bound by his programming. But I will say, <laughs> this is a gripe. David's outgoing character, I, I liked. I like outgoing characters. I really do. James McAvoy is another one. And for Michael Fassbender, he's perfect of what he does. But the the kissing kissing Walter thing, I just yeah, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really into that. I don't know if anybody else was, but I didn't really I, I don't know. It kind of took me out a little bit. Okay, but when finally David and Walter actually fucking have a, a Terminator T one thousand T eight hundred smackdown, it is fucking awesome. They were very equal in strength, and I like that how David uh, you know gave him a. A good hit, he thought he was down, and then Walter stood back and says, there have been upgrades. David's like, shit. God damn, David hit him so hard in the neck, he seized up to like a fetal, some type of weird cross, legs cross position with his mouth open. It was just fucking odd looking, but yet entertaining to see them fight. It was awesome. That was one of the major parts of the movie that was glorious and was worth the price of admission. And then they had to come up into one of those scenes to where you're like, okay, somebody's about to die, and then one person, one one synthetic will walk out of here. And it, it ended up being David. Yep, David paraded around like Walter, changed his voice to act more sophisticated and more upgraded, and paraded around like Walter and uh, ended up getting back on the ship with the rest of the crew. The motherfucker even cut his hand off to match Walter's. I mean... That's method acting, if I do say so. I mean, I, I really was kind of, I really was kind of rooting for Walter though. I, Walter was actually a good character, and I like how he defended all the humans and kind of stood by their side and stood by their morals. At one point, right before they, you know, fucking started fighting, he was like, "You know, I can't let you walk out of here, right?" Fucking badass. I'm always rooting for David, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing towards more of the Walter side. I'm Team Walter now, and hopefully. 
uh, he most likely is gone and dead, but we've seen androids and synthetics ripped in half, and you know they're they're able to be put back together. And David got his head ripped off in Prometheus. Will he make a comeback? Most likely not, but he was a good character, if not. Get to the part where the chest burst is coming out, and David's just kind of looking at his creation, and the music, it was all on point. That was one of my favorite scenes. It had to be, that is going to be one of the most legendary scenes in the whole trilogy, I believe. The first chest burster we're actually seeing, I don't, we don't know if David, he's been experimenting, but... The music, it was just, everything was gorgeous, it was beautiful, it was fucking, it was unsettling and creepy. It was, it was definitely had to be some puppeteer work, <laughs> and it made it so, it was, it was good, it was just awesome. I had to go back and, like, look up that music and listen to that, because it was just, it was just, it was just on point. David put his hands up, and, uh, it, the alien actually kind of put his hands up too, and unsettling, like, and the communication, he was, he's really under, in this movie, he really... I don't know how, if he's engineered them this way, if he's just, if it just so happens to be this way, but somehow he understands them, and he's trying to have this uh, Owen-Raptor communication, like from Jurassic World, like he understands them, they understand each other. This thing is almost like his baby, and he doesn't want it to die, but when we get to the ending scene where the, the, the colonist plows, or uh, that's what they end up usually taking out the alien with, is uh, these plows they have connected to chains, and uh, they disconnected the chains and kind of stuck the alien, and you almost think he's going to end up getting back on the ship, but he doesn't. They I mean, they're almost running out of ways to kill these things, so the way they did it this way, it's kind of fresh-ish. It's just, it's different. Very reminiscent of um, aliens. For some reason, the sound of their boots clicking on the ground. I don't know if anybody else got that. If you did, please tell me. When their boots were clicking on the um, on the metal, on the metal grates, it sounded very much like Aliens, like he's recycled the same sounds, which is cool because he's not the same director of Aliens. That was also James Cameron. But um, overall, very much enjoyed the movie. I don't want to give any negative or uh, vague reactions. I did enjoy it. The beginning was iffy. If I when I buy when I eventually buy the DVD or Blu-ray, I will most likely not be watching most of the beginning parts. I'll just kind of like uh, I don't know, make a sandwich, make a pizza come back to it and watch the rest of it, but it is worth watching in the movies. It is a movie-going experience, especially for the chestburster scene with the music. It's just, oh, I can't, I can't even, I can't do it justice. You just have to see it for yourself, but that is going to do it for today. I got more on the way. If you guys like this and you want to see more videos like this, like, share, subscribe, and oh, and by the way, have a good day.